Mazda. Hello guys, tell me, what is the first thing you associate with a cork tree and a cork at all? What are the possible options? Well, bottles of wine seem to be plugged up with it, and this material can sometimes be used in construction. All of this is true, but it is unlikely that it will occur to you that there may be a connection between a cork and a car. More precisely, a specific car brand. But actually, there is a connection. In 2020, the assembly of the first electric car of the automaker Mazda started in the Japanese city of Hiroshima. It was the Mazda MX-30. Well, what's the big deal, you might think? A lot of companies produce electric cars, and what does the story about the cork have to do with it? Well, the fact is, Mazda MX-30 had one interesting feature in the interior decoration. To be precise, one of the materials that were used to make the interior of this car was cork, the most natural cork that cork trees could give you. But the most important thing is that it was not just an original whim of the designer. This was done absolutely consciously and emphasized the connection of Mazda with cork production. The idea was supposed to revive one important but now forgotten story, the story of how Mazda, or rather Mazda Motor Corporation, appeared. And that's what we want to tell you. But let's get to know the main character right away. In the summer of 1875, the twelfth child was born in the family of the most ordinary fisherman. As people say, the Japanese protected themselves at the time as they could, so a boy was named Jujiro Matsuda. This event happened in the prefecture of the city of Hiroshima. Can you imagine what a fun family it was? Well, it was not easy to feed such a horde. It was to be expected that the help of the father of the family was simply necessary. Times were also hard for the country. There were reforms and other changes. Jujiro Matsuda's childhood was not easy. At the age of seven or eight, he already helped his father as much as he could. In fact, this is one of the ordinary stories of Japanese families. It was a hard time for many people. Labor made a man out of a monkey, and Labor also made the blacksmith's assistant out of a small Japanese boy at the age of 14. The father noticed that little Jujiro liked iron, blacksmithing, and various mechanisms, and decided to develop his son's skills. He sent him to the blacksmith shop for study. However, Jujiro had to move since the forge was too far away. Then he studied the craft, and at the age of 20, having gained the courage, opened his own forge in his shed. And he was ready to rake in the dough, but as it turned out, he didn't have many orders. The work was hard, and the payment for it wasn't that high. Therefore, Jujiro Mitsuda was forced to wind down his first business. But as you know, only the one who does nothing is not mistaken. For the next few years, Jujiro was forced to work for hire in one forge or another, but we must say that our hero did not abandon the goal of leaving his mark on the history of Japan. And so, even while working for someone else, he continued to make and design various things as a hobby. And he did get something. By 1906, he had come up with a pump of his own unique design. He even patented it and reopened his own business, but things didn't go very well. And after a while, he once again had to close up shop. Jujiro Matsuda as an entrepreneur was stormed very hard. In his life, there were both rise and fall, and he was already over 30 years old. But he didn't give up. As a matter of fact, like all the heroes from our previous stories, so, once again, Jujiro Matsuda had to look for a new job, and so he got a job as an intern at a steel mill. In his studies, he achieved such excellent results that soon, after working a little at the factory as a worker, he became its manager. It would seem that a person who has worked with metal since the age of 14 had found himself. Moreover, he began to use the same pumps of his own design in production and even produce them there. But strangely enough, the owners of the plant did not like his aspiration for innovation, and Jujiro Matsuda was dismissed from his post. But by that time, he had already had some capital, and most importantly, work experience at a large enterprise. In 1920, Jujiro Matsuda found like-minded people in Hiroshima, with whom he bought out a construction company that was on the verge of bankruptcy, and they decided to start manufacturing cork wood products. By the way, some sources indicate that the products were not made from cork, but from local plants that were a substitute for cork. But anyway, the company, Toyo Cork Kogyo Company Limited, was born. They began to produce various products from cork, like cork press plates, which could be used as thermal or sound insulation. In 1921, Jujiro Matsuda became the president of this company. And so we're getting closer and closer to the beginning of Jujiro Matsuda's work in motor transport production. Is it clear now why on the 100th anniversary of Mazda, it was decided to symbolically decorate the interior of the first electric car with a cork? This Japanese symbolism, but as a tribute to memory, certainly a beautiful gesture. After all, we are alive as long as we remember our history. We think you can agree it looked rather strange that a man who worked with metal all his life and had an inventive mind suddenly took up cork. It is expected that Jujiro Matsuda would not stop there, and so it is. Jujiro, realizing that he now had production facilities at his disposal, and most importantly people, looking at the automotive industry reviving in his country, decided to join this movement. 
The first step was the reconfiguration of the existing Enterprise for the production of machine building equipment. Things were going well with the cork and now they'd gotten even better. The new direction was a success in the conditions of the developing Japanese industry, and in 1927, Toyo Cork Kogyo Company Limited finally changed the type of activity. And now, the mention of the cork past disappears from the title. Now the company was called Toyo Kogyo Limited. Continuing to make machines, they began to try themselves in the production of motorcycles, one of which even won some important races in 1930. This attracted additional public attention to Jujiro Matsuda. But motorcycles were quite difficult to manufacture, most importantly, not very practical. Only to drive by yourself and roll the occasional girlfriend around. The company needed something more useful. Now comes 1931, a landmark year for Jujiro Matsuda. Toyo Kogyo Limited decided to produce a kind of hybrid motorcycle truck. The output turned out to be a nice and useful three-wheeled vehicle for transport of people and cargo. Equipped with a small volume engine, no more than 500 cubic centimeters. In fact, it was an engine from an air-coiled motorcycle. Recall that the Japanese government supported the manufacture of small cars in Japan, so that's hardly a coincidence. The company under the leadership of Jujiro Matsuda had once again rebranded and changed the name. Now it was everyone's already familiar name, Mazda. A three-wheeled miracle with a small body was released as a Mazda Go. According to the ideas of the engineers, it was the simplest and most reliable transport, at the same time with increased maintainability. For those who are particularly attentive, we will immediately answer the question, why does the Mazda Go have a Mitsubishi badge on the gas tank? Well, that's simple. First of all, Mazda entrusted the sale of its three-wheeled firstborn to the already developed Mitsubishi dealer network. This company didn't do it very well, and Jujiro Matsuda decided to do sales on his own, and that was a good idea. This was perhaps one of the main successes of Jujiro Matsuda and his team in the 1930s. Three-wheeled trucks were successfully sold in Japan and even went abroad to China before the aggravation of relations with China, of course. Well, Mazda didn't forget about the army. By the way, two more interesting facts. The name Mazda came from the ancient god Ahura Mazda, and plus it was also very consistent with the surname of its founder, Jujiro Matsuda. This god seemed to be responsible for justice and decency. And the second fact is the three-wheeled mini-trucks, Mazda Go, were a copy of European transport. However, that probably didn't surprise you that much. Whatever, the product can safely be considered successful. In total, more than 200,000 vehicles have been produced in the entire history of the Mazda Go model. Despite the fact that the company focused on a practical subcompact format of trucks, in parallel, Mazda engineers began working on the design of full-fledged passenger cars. According to some reports, a prototype of one of these cars was even ready in 1940. But soon, the Second World War began and the company had other concerns, so serial production was never launched. And so, in 1941, a war broke out in the world, a war in which Mazda played its own role. There is not much to say here, but it is absolutely certain that the company was engaged in the production of small arms and ammunition. One of the types of weapons were, for example, such Type 9 Arasaka rifles. By the way, Jujiro Matsuda approached the production of rifles and cartridges even earlier. After the Russian-Japanese War, for example, no matter how strange it might sound, his company produced weapons and ammo for the Russian army. So it wasn't a new business for the company, and there was production experience. In addition, Mazda supplied various machines for the needs of other military industries. And of course, the company also began to provide three-wheeled trucks for the needs of the Japanese army. The Jujiro Matsuda Enterprise operated almost normally during the war, since Hiroshima, where the main plant was located, was also not bombed by the enemy. But as you can understand, everything about that changed in the summer of 1945. On August 6th, the city was shaken by an explosion of unprecedented force. It was the first atomic bomb dropped on Japan. As for Mazda, which territory was very close to the epicenter of the explosion, the main office was completely destroyed, and the main plant was partially eliminated. In the surviving workshops, aid stations were deployed to help victims of this terrible explosion. The explosion happened only two miles from the plant, and nothing should have been left of it. More precisely, a pile of stones. But there was a mountain in the way of the shockwave, which saved part of the plant. Further, as many probably know, it was signed the Act of Surrender of Japan. Trials began against various entrepreneurs who worked for the Japanese army. They were tried as accomplices in war crimes, but Jujiro Matsuda was lucky, and he was not heavily terrorized in this way. Therefore, he could more or less calmly engage in the restoration of his brainchild, and there was a lot to restore. Thanks to the efforts made, Mazda was slowly but surely returning to the production of cars. At the end of 1945, the conveyor started working again, and in 1949, their three-wheeled trucks were already traveling on the roads of India. They were called Type CT and were equipped with a more powerful engine with a volume of 1,157 centimeters cubed. In the same 1949, the already old Jujiro Matsuda left the post of head of the company. 
and his son, Tanuji Matsuda, took his place. In the late 1950s, Mazda was developing truck production. Moreover, they were already quite full-fledged, and by 1960 it included 30 cargo models, from small minivans to larger ones, such as the Mazda Romper, which could take one ton of cargo. Not like the three-wheeled midgets with a motorcycle engine, is it? Pre-war developments of full-fledged passenger cars also began to develop, and in 1960, they produced the first tiny four-seater car, Mazda R360, with a small 356 cubic centimeter engine, a coupe body, and two doors. Not premium class, but simple, reliable, and most importantly, inexpensive. In a word, just the thing. The Japanese gradually became wealthier, and the commercial success of such a model was ensured. Look at it. It's so cute. Well, Mazda decided to do something not quite the usual direction for car manufacturers. In the 1960s, in cooperation with German engineers, in the company appeared a division that would begin to deal with rotary engines. It was the German craftsman Walter Freud and Felix Wankel who developed a workable version of such a miracle at that time. In fact, it's also an internal combustion engine, but the main difference is the absence of cylinders and pistons in the classical sense. In a conventional internal combustion engine, the main role is played by a movable piston, then in a rotary one, the rotor. Both types of engines are designed to create the rotation of the shaft, from which the rotation is already transmitted to the wheels. And in the case of pistons, we need connecting rods, a crankshaft, and so on, in order to convert reciprocating motion into shaft rotation. But it's easier with the rotor. It already gives direct rotational motion to the shaft. If you wish, you can use Google to find out more specific information, as this type of engine is definitely worthy of attention. But it used a lot of oil and gasoline and could not boast of a durability resource, but as an alternative, it has the right to life. As a result of experiments in this direction, in 1967, the world was presented with the first production car in the history of mankind with a rotary engine, Mazda Cosmo Sport 110S. At the same time, this model was immediately subjected to a real test at the famous Nuremberg track race in Germany. Two of these cars, among others, have been spinning circles around the track for 84 hours. One car couldn't stand it, but the second took a worthy fourth place as the beginner. Well, it's not surprising that after that, a lot of Mazda export cars flooded into the European market. There were several models, most with a rotary engine. In total, by 1970, about 100,000 cars with a rotary engine were produced. In the same year, Mazda began to cooperate with Ford, opening a factory in New Zealand. In a word, they began to develop in an adult way. Now, we should tell a couple of boring but necessary facts. In 1973, exports reached 1 million cars, and in the 1970s, several models of sports cars were released at once one of which, for example, was the Savannah RX-7. A little later, such bestsellers for the company as the Mazda 323 and Mazda 626 appeared. In 1980, another successful model, Mazda Familia, was recognized as the car of the year in Japan. In general, by the end of the century, Mazda had taken a firm position in the global car market. At least, this is evidenced by the fact that the offices were open in the USA and Europe. Mazda has built a special laboratory as its production facilities to study aerodynamic characteristics. If they took up aerodynamics, then this indicated that clearly no one was going to abandon the sports direction. And it once again emphasized that the guys from Mazda were serious about their business. One of the legendary and massive sports cars in the world at the time was Mazda MX-5, which was shown at the Chicago Auto Show in 1989. It was a rear-wheel drive two-seater roadster developed jointly with the English Lotus Company. The name came from the abbreviation Mazda Experiment Project No. 5. As a result, the experiment became a sensation, at least because it was one of the most affordable among its counterparts, and its appearance was quite pretty and bright. In the 1990s, Mazda gave us such models as AutoZam Review and Unos Cosmo with navigation on board. At that time, the 25th millionth car of the company was produced. Work began on the environmental friendliness of Mazda cars. In 1970, the company's logo changed to the one we are familiar with. By the way, the company had a lot of logos, from the simplest to the most sophisticated. Well, the one that now flaunts on Mazda cars is somewhat reminiscent of the outline of an owl's head. In fact, according to the idea of the designers, this emblem symbolizes the determination of Mazda, expressed by a pair of wings in the shape of a letter M in an oval. Well, that's how they see it, what can you do? But as for determination, it is an indisputable fact. Like most of their colleagues in the automotive industry after the war, Mazda had to get up from its knees and start a lot anew. But nothing is as strong as something that has gone through hard times. There is a story behind every big name, and Mazda, founded by the son of a simple fisherman from Hiroshima, is no exception. And the Japanese remember and honor it. That's why in the cabin of a brand new electric car, Mazda MX-30, we can see elements made of corkwood, which became the starting point for Mazda Motor Corporation 100 years ago.